So this is my knife collection. Hey, thank you. Dave. Uh, in regards to the collection, I thought it was a bit lacking. So Ooh. I thought I'd bring you this bad boy. A seal pup for me? Yeah. Official knife of the seals. I actually, I even signed it for you. Did you? Yeah. Did you coach to sign it? I didn't have enough cash. Sorry. Oh, okay, bud. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. Seal pup, sure, bud. And it was given to me enough. by a real Navy SEAL. Super cool. Hi guys, today with Tap Live. And uh, today's something a little something different, right? So I saw Coach's knife collection, I saw Doors knife collection. I'm like, I'm gonna show my knife collection. So not that it's a competition, but everything's a competition, right? <laughs> so, uh, hey, welcome to uh, Dave here. Welcome to an Army Ranger's uh, lifetime career of knives. Hey! <laughs> How's it going? You know, if you ever have to use any of this stuff in defense of yourself or a loved one like yourself, mm -hmm. you might want to look into some legal protection. Yes. Here at the channel, we use CCW Save. Yep. All right. Unlike other companies, these guys are going to send out, they're going to pick your, they're going to hand pick your legal team, all right, for starters. And then if need be, they'll send out a representative to do an independent investigation on your behalf into your incident. I'm a believer. Um, hopefully we never have to use it, but yeah, better to have it, not need it. And uh, I mean, it happens, you know, stuff happens. Yep. So be ready. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, guys. So here's my knife collection that I've acquired over 20 years of service to the, to the military. And I'm just gonna go down the middle from, from left to right and kind of work my way through them. Uh, this knife here was one of my first, like, on my kit. You know, everybody has to have a knife, a kit, a knife on their kit stuff. But this is one of my first ones uh, that I had. And this was the sheath for it. You can see it's, it's all beat up. It's chewed up. I can't remember who makes this one anymore because I can't even see it. AWAC, AWAC company. But it's been incredibly sharp. Uh, the, the, the sheath has been incredibly durable. I've had this mounted sideways. I've had this mounted on my kit upside down. It's been a really good knife. And this has actually, I've had a lot of service with this knife. I got a couple of knives here. I got quite a few that were just made for me by really good friends of mine. This right here is another special knife. Holds, holds pretty dear promise to me, uh, or you know, something to me. Believe it or not, I'm one of the few people that uh, still talk to his recruiter. Like my recruiter didn't lie to me, right? Uh, my recruiter's a great guy, in fact, and uh, squared me away. He got into the knife making uh, world for a while, and uh, this is what he made, a nice little Damascus steel uh, boot knife with a nice round pommel grip on it so that uh, works great I'm really cool knife and the fact that he made it for me uh, means a lot to me the guy put me in the army you know uh, this right here is another little tactical service knife that I've had as my world progressed and my kit got better and space becomes premium my knife got a little bit shorter I wasn't carrying these big massive knives anymore um, and this knife here it's a great Kydex holster that I, I would clip in and zip tie to my kit, whether I'm running it. I ran a lot of my knives back on my side here. Um, they're easy to get. I can sit into a vehicle without bending it back and forth. And it's out of my magazines and stuff like that. This old timer hunting knife right here, I don't know how many, I grew up in the South. I've grown up hunting and fishing. And I've used this knife over and over and over to, uh, to skin things and then to handle everything I need from cutting 550 cord to make knots to, uh, you know, having to rip the hide off of a raccoon or something. But uh, this has been a good one. It's got a rubber handle, which I've had a lot of blood on this, on this blade and it doesn't slip. It's been a really good knife. This is by Old Timer. Again, super sharp. Sharpen it once, it stays sharp. This knife I actually had before I came in the army and I had never heard of Boker, right? Uh, and I got this from a good friend of mine uh, when I was just going through my senior year of high school. And uh, he kind of tuned me into uh, to Boker and who they were. And uh, again, hunting and fishing. This is one of my very first knives that I would carry all the time, especially if I'm out in the woods doing stuff. Great knife, good memories. You know, you get into the, the tactical world of tactical this and tactical that, and that's the wrong sheath. However, there we go. 
cool little dagger knife you know it's got a it's got a ring on the end of it for your fighting styles um i don't know i've never used it in fighting it's one of those knives that was kind of given to me it's cool i'm certainly not going to get rid of it but i also i'm not strapping around my neck and carrying it every day from every day see i don't want to reach under my shirt and grab my knife out but uh, it's still a super cool knife just uh kind of become part of my collection i don't even know where i got this knife i'd like to have a story behind it i don't know it showed up in my drawer and i was like cool a uh, super cool knife uh, i don't even know who makes this knife i know it's sharp it's cut a lot of 550 cord and tubular nylon but it's again part of the collection the most meaningful knife to me is this one this was my grandfather's knife and i can remember being a little kid in underwear and a t-shirt or sometimes no t-shirt running around the his house and running around the sidewalk as a kid and uh, he would give this to me and let me give me a task he wouldn't let me go play with it he'd tell me hey son go go do this or go do that and I, i'm sure he was carefully watching over me but uh yeah this was my grandfather's and pretty special these four five knives right here are uh super cool they're all made by a guy named dan peters and uh dan peters owns his own knife company now he's still in the army i met dan we shot together at the amu uh, dan was a high power shooter he He's a man of many talents. He's just a really cool dude, right? Well, one of the really cool things he does is he builds some pretty badass knives. Uh, he started with these things right here. And I don't have the sheath on me, but it has a small little leather square sheath. And this thing tucks up inside of it. And really what it looks like is just a bottle opener. It looks like a bottle opener with a leather handle. And you pull it out and it's super, super sharp. This was not because I've abused the shit out of it, um, which goes to the testament of the type of steel that he uses. Um, for that speaking of steel and types of steel this knife right here is a dan peter special we effectively called it the angry ginger after the guy that he built this thing for i watched him take the prototype of this and it was like crm 128 i don't know i'm not a meteorologist but it was made out of unobtainium i watched him chop through a car door i watched him chop a split rail fence in half with it and then he did the slice and dice and piece right like this thing incredibly sharp the angry ginger Another Dan Peter special. This is like one of his first combat played prototypes he was coming out with. And this became my next evolution of knives, you know, that I started putting into my kit uh, and stuff like that. Again, it's the, the, it's the steel, the level of detail that he uses and his micarta handles, the finishings, uh, just awesome. But one thing I also really like about almost all of Dan's knives have like no type or all, all of his sheaths are all like leather bound to the knife and they don't have tabs or switches and stuff like that they just they're form fitted like kydex but it's leather i mean that's that's pretty cool you know the angry ginger has the same one same type of sheath and you know it's like it's been there the knife i probably use the most is this little green handled kitchen paring knife um, i can't tell you the number of hogs and deer i have dismantled with and honestly i've never sharpened this knife i've never had to it's, in, it's still razor sharp uh and it's it comes with the same style of hand you know that same style of sheath where it's not coming out. It's, it's basically a leather kydex i didn't know you could do such a thing but dan peter's knives and then the last one was the first knife of dan peter's that he made for me uh and this is the one he begged me not to make right <laughs> because i told him dan I wanted Damascus steel because all I've ever heard about how badass Damascus is. And he's like, Dave, you don't want that. I'm like, yes, I do. He's like, no, you don't. I was like, yes, I do. He's like, fine, I'll make it. And he made it. And uh, he was right. Like the knife is great. The, the, the way the knife is designed, really comfortable in the hand, broad blades, you know, uh, just a beautiful knife. However, he is right. The Damascus, I should have listened to them. I mean, what do I know about making knives? Uh, requires a lot of attention to keep sharp. It stay, it's, it's sharp. But requires attention as where the others are kind of like fire and forget that's also the other one i think maybe because he was pissed off at me <laughs> this is the one he you put a buckle on <laughs> out of all the other ones got the cool holster and i got this one because this is the one i forced on him all right moving on uh hunting knives these are christmas presents to me ah! uh, these are christmas presents and again I've, I've used them extensively they also have kind of like that they're not really rubber they're like parts of the parts of the handles are rubber parts are not but they're gripped and grooved uh you know a little 
a little paring knife, a little skinning knife, uh, and they come in a pair and they've been great. I've used them for years. Another hunting knife, uh, tell by the gut hook here. Uh, gut hooks work great. I've, I've Really, I'd rather use a gut hook than try to slip my fingers underneath something, right? Uh, hardest thing I find with the, with the gut hooks are uh, keeping them sharp. You know, so you got to have the round files and you got to have the, you know, the different styles. That's the only thing. But really, how often do you use a gut hook? You know, so they don't also get that dull, you know? Um, so it's a, it's a balance and trade-off. This one's cool because out of all the other knives up here, uh, what you see this one has is this serrated piece of top. Uh, really good when you're trying to quarter up an animal to get it out of the woods and maybe you just can't get through a piece of bone or you can't get through a piece of gristle you know you can if you have to you can saw through it um so good hunting knife oh also another rubber handle sorry those are my ferocious killer dogs uh, i'm about to eat door as he goes into the door <laughs> this knife here the hunting heritage classic so it's a shrade knife super cool uh i won this at an auction and uh it's so pretty and so unique. Like I never, I could never come to uh, use it for anything, you know, because it's just like it's a collector's knife. But what I have done is, you know, I just did a thing on knots, and you see all my knots are are here, <laughs> uh, keeping this knife in place. Now we're getting into some everyday carry uh, purpose knives, right? So this is a this is a Gerber. I'm sorry, this is, I'm sorry, this is a Benchmade. I was looking at the Gerber right there. Uh, this is a Gerber everyday standard folding knife. It's got the dual sided thumb and it's got the ball bearing assist so you can open it quickly with one hand one thing that always amazes me when i get whether it's a if it's a folder i don't know why they do they put these clips on right and for whatever reason most times these clips are on this side of the knife and i always have to take it off and turn it because when this goes into my pocket it go it would go like this well how do i now pull it out get my hand in the right spot so i can open it I like the knife to come in like this, so as my hand goes into my pocket, it comes out already in position to open. Mm -hmm. um, the unique thing, I bring that up because this knife was not like that. This knife came with what I would call the uh, correct position for the, uh, for the pocket clip. So it's one of the folders. Uh, this, is the, this is the Gerber um, pocket knife, um, auto knife. So uh, this one here, I did have to move. <laughs> it was mounted here. I turned it and moved it here. Uh, it's got the Tonto style blade. You know, some, there's differences. Uh, it's got the serrated back edge. Serrate, serrations are nice, uh, but again, they're difficult to keep sharp without flattening them out those serrates like, like they're made to do. All right, to be honest, this is not my knife. This is a folder, right? Um, it's got a little razor, like clothes ripper thing in the back for whatever. And uh, I did tell you, so this has got the auto assist here but it also has the auto assist here. So that opens it up well, right? And the reason I'm holding it over here, I don't want you to really see it because I did say it was a competition, right? <laughs> this is my wife's knife. Uh, 2014 Area One Championships from Black Hawk. So my wife won this and uh, well, again, there I said it. <laughs> another knife that was made for me, super cool dude. A, another good long story about a guy just kind of finding himself and got lost into bending and heating and melting and shoveling steel he made this this is also another little boot knife he made me he's got a little boot clip he painted it super camouflage and i don't know why it's a boot knife but whatever you know it's cool it's in my uh it's in my repertoire it's got a serrated edge again i'm not sure what i'm gonna do with it but that's why i have it obviously super cool right they're super expensive and uh i'm telling you if you don't keep them oiled up and working all the time, what you'll run into is this. Ah, and you're like, ah. So, uh, good knife. I just, I don't, I don't know. I really carry it because, uh, again, I want something that's going to work all the time, every time. And I've had this one here come open in my pocket, do this or like that, and I pull it out. And I'm like, ah, and it's, it, it works, but it's just not the way it's designed to work. The guy that made the boot knife um, also made me this one here, right? And uh, he made this knife. So this knife's etched on it. It says a uh, conflict resolution. It's got a leather handle. It's got a horn piece on the back. Uh, just a just a hunting Bowie knife. But what makes it cool? Conflict resolution. Because when I was at the Army Marksmanship Unit, um, when we would go train guys, like we didn't like to be out there and be like, ah, oh, we're in the Army. 
we tried to be as low-key as we could not could be. And uh, they'd ask us what we're doing. We'd tell them, hey, we're here teaching a class. You know, and if it was a if it was an SDM class, like, oh, yeah, we're teachers, man. We're here teaching uh, short-range conflict, uh, you know, and, and how to deal with short-range conflict. You know, we work for a company called Conflict Resolution, and he made me this knife. So, again, it's, that's why it's funny to me. This is actually a pretty cool little utility knife. This is one that I maybe would wear around my neck, depending on where I'm at and what I'm doing. If I'm camping, I'm hiking, I'm doing something. It's light. It's, you know, it's sharp. It's got multi-purpose things I can do with it. Uh, the sheath, again, locks in nice and tight and hangs around your neck. You can fix it where you want. You, you could put it on your kit or wherever. You know, this would be a good little backpack knife you can access. I mean, you, know, you always need a knife, but super cool one. This came from... This was a this was a uh, wedding gift. Uh, we were I was best man, you know, groomsman, and for uh, this were groomsmen's gifts for a, a very close friend of mine, and he got us all these uh, super expensive, super sharp knives with a like a really kick-ass sheath on them. Um, so when I when I see this knife every time I do, I think about him. I think about that day. Certainly, it's important to me and special to me. What would a good knife be? Collection B without you know. The old school Gerber tactical leg straps and all. You know, I need to I need to start running that in my kit, like behind my gun back here somewhere. Or I'll wear it on this side. I don't know. But I don't know. Again, it's just one of those tac tactical knives that if you have a knife collection, you tend to have a lot of tactical knives. So there's another one. Simple. I mean, you would be so surprised. I'm so surprised how much I use just this small, tiny little folder. There's nothing special to it. You know, it's just, it's, it's made by SOG. I mean, it's a good knife. It's got rubber handles. It's gripped. You know, you can grip it tight. It's certainly not a fighting knife. But, you know, I use this for everything from fixing bicycles to cutting things to tightening up screws. You name it. Like, it's a great multi-purpose tool. <clears throat> this one fell during the uh, discussion. But, again, another custom-made knife for me by, by a buddy of mine. Uh... It's Damascus also. Uh, this Damascus is probably better than the Damascus Dan made for me, so I should probably talk to him about that one because this one's still pretty damn sharp. And uh, when I run my hand across it, like, I still can feel the fat on this where like, probably the last time I used it was to, was to skin a hog or something. You know, cause there's a lot of fat in there, which means that I'm really kind of showing my, my poor care of equipment. Huh? Um, I should do a better job. Um, and then these little... Uh, Close openers, right? So we got these issued to us like early into the war, you know, the neighbors like, so when you got an injury, you can come in that hole and rip it open and it immediately expose it. You know, little, little, uh, she's, we, obviously we never really used these. We used shears for everything, but these also suck to jump with, you know, they come out, you get punctured on them like there. So they came out with version two, which is this plastic enclosed, like, you know, Helen Keller couldn't cut herself with this thing. But that's not the intent. The intent is to get clothes off without cutting someone. It, what we did was we repurposed because, man, we would get these. Every deployment, every guy would have to go through um, the rapid equipping force, the REF, and they would get all these things. Hey, here's three pairs of boots. I don't need three pairs of boots. Well, you're getting them. Hey, here's another, here's another jacket opener. I don't need a jacket opener. I got six of them. Well, here's another one. So we had an abundance of these. You know what they came in great for? Vehicles. So this is a vehicle and this is a vehicle. We have our tow chain strap stepped up. So if, if this vehicle is in, hits an ID, can't move. You got, a, you got one chain going this way, one chain going this way. And same over here. So when you, all I can do is just, I grab this chain and that chain, hook them up, and now I can drag them off the X. Well, try to keep those tow ropes up where they need to be. We would hold them up in, tight, in place with heavy duty um, zip ties. And then at the end of the rope, we'd put these up there so we can pull them off and just tap, 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 tap. Super fast. We found a solution for them. They gave them to us. We've actually used them more than I wanted to use them. I'll tell you that. Hey guys, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about, I have all these knives, how to keep them sharp. I've uh, used plenty, of, there's plenty of great knife sharpeners out there. However, keep in mind, like I've told you before, I'm lazy by nature, right? So I literally bought this. I was given this when I was a private. I've had this since I was a private, and it has been in every squad, every team, every platoon I've ever had, and every one of them have dragged their knives through here. It's so easy to use, and it will make a razor sharp 
knife, right? So it's got one, two, and three. I never really use one because that's super, super coarse. You know, if you got a butter knife and you want to turn it into a razor, then you'd shape it here. I use two, which is the medium stone and the fine stone. But just to show you, just real quickly, like this is that one I showed you that I haven't taken very good care of, and it's pretty dull, right? But I go through here. Can you... It puts it at the right angle for you, so you get the same consistent cut. And there's a lot of knife sharpers out there to do that. Uh, S. Lasky, I've used those a lot too, but the setup and all that for me, because I'm lazy, I don't use them as much. This thing here, kitchen knives, you name it. And then I go to the finishing, you can hear the difference. You can hear that fine, that, you know. Let's go, let's go three more passes, and we'll see where we're at. Look at that, cuts the hair off my arm now. And it did that in, what, 25 seconds? And now it's back to being sharp again. So. That's my go-to for my knives. There's a lot of them out there. I've used a lot of them. Uh, they're also really great, but this just goes to my lazy nature. So that's why I like it the most. And my wife can use it, which also makes it easy in the kitchen. That's my like sharp knife collection, right? Um, obviously I'm a knife enthusiast. I like it. Uh, a couple of my different training knives I've used over the years. I taught, uh, I was one of the PIs for hand-to-hand -hand at Sear School, and uh, I was allowed to kind of help rewrite the POI uh, and get away from Sear, Sear lines training uh, back into something more, a little more realistic. So we focused on knife fighting, stick fighting, and the weapons disarmament. You know, I can find a stick anywhere, but just because you can find a stick don't mean you know how to use a stick. Weapons disarmament, kind of a big thing if you're trying to get away from somebody. Um, and then knife fighting. If you get a knife, like how do you use it? So. Uh, out of the three different, out of these three different knives, these two are for the most part pretty much the same. They're both rubber knives. This one's a little more flexible, you know. This one's a little more rigid. Um, this one here really hurts because <laughs> when you're swinging and slapping, you get that snack. Like even if you're on the blade, like you'll see dudes that are just they're all whelped up after an afternoon of knife pretend knife fighting. But if you're gonna do that, I also recommend that you use a solid blade knife. And in fact, if I had the capacity, whatever knife I'm carrying on my kit, I would buy another one just like it and just grind the blade down to nothing so I could use that because there's a difference in training if I want to control an arm or do something with it, this knife's gonna bend. It's not gonna give me the same feeling that I'm looking for with this. That tells me, hey, my hand placement is in the wrong spot, which is why my hand's doing this. So it's, it's a teaching tool to teach you how to use the rigidity of that blade a little better than these. Um, but these will hurt you a lot worse than those. So there's a place for all of them. Um, but that kind of covers my, my knife collection. I hope I didn't let anybody down. I hope that I covered everybody who had given me a knife or have been a part of my knife journey. Thank you very much. Um, if you guys like this type of comment or content and you guys would like to see more of it, uh, let me know. Show me your knife collections. Obviously, we're big knife fans. We haven't even talked about axes, hatchets, broad axes, and samurai swords yet. I have those too. Um, so if you have them, show them. Let's talk about them. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, share the video. And uh, thanks, guys. Uh, cut happy. <laughs>